Before I start this video, I just want to give a brief shout out here. I firstly want to give a shout out to this user named Ian Hillman. The reason being is because he's the one who requested I do a tour like this. So if you are watching this video, Ian Hillman, this video is dedicated to you. I hope you enjoy the video and yeah, see you later. Hope you guys enjoy. Hi everybody, it's Clock TV here. Today we're back with another video. You might be wondering, is this a winding clock series video? Well, actually, you're wrong. It is actually going to be a clock collection update today. However, we're doing it a bit of a different way. So, I recently received a comment from one of my fans saying that narrations would be helpful in my clock collection updates saying it would be a bit more informative. And for the person who left this comment, I'm going to make this video specifically for you. So this is basically gonna be a nearly full in-depth tour of my entire um, clock collection. I may not go through every single clock, but I'm gonna try and make it as quick as possible because I don't want it to be too long but I will try my best to get through every clock. So we are gonna start over here. We firstly have this Quartz Westminster Chime Mantel Clock. Um, this came from a thrift store for about $11. It runs good, however, it doesn't have a pendulum. No, it's not behind the book, but yeah, it's pretty basic. Here is the world famous HAC Westminster chime mantle clock. There's a lot to say behind this and I want to make this a shorter version of it. This has been in my house for several years. Sadly, it does not run and it does not do the full Westminster chime on the hour. It only strikes on the hour. There's the key and it has a really unique mechanism in it and there's a lot behind this clock. It's one of the most famous clocks in my shop, and everyone seems to love it. But yeah, there is a very large story behind that clock. Now we move on to the cuckoo clocks, which I've got five of them. The first one, we have this one right here. I got this from one of my family members, and I do not know the brand of it, but it doesn't say anywhere. However, the rest of the clocks are going off and I don't want to talk over them. It runs good and it chimes perfectly. However, the dancing up here does not run. It just chimes and runs. It's in great condition as well. Here, I have no clue what this is. As you can see, it doesn't have any hands on it. It definitely has seen better days and it's, and see the bird itself is really worn out. Really need to get that fixed. Overall, I hope to get this thing in some better condition at some point. Here is the newest cuckoo clock to the shop. It's a Regola eight day cuckoo clock. And I recently got this about a month ago, I think. It is in practically new condition, great cosmetic condition, runs and chimes absolutely perfect. And yeah. Here we have a Swiss musical movement cuckoo clock. It does not run and the dancing does not work either. It's got a bit of a fancy paint right here. And it is in good condition, but sadly it does not run. Pause to read if you want to read that. And here we have this one. Uh, full focus, there we go. I got this from a family member. And it doesn't have hands on it. However, it does run. This one runs perfectly. The dancing part does not work though. Oh, that's the bird. Yeah, the dancing does not run. Mainly just because I don't have another weight for it. 
But yeah, it runs good. It's, I just need to get hands for it. Here we have the Spoojal & Company 31 Day Wall Clock. This came from a clock shop for around $70. Great condition, runs good. And yeah, this is a Korean clock, by the way. Um, if it'll focus, it says Korea right there. Focus, there we go. This is a Westchester Clockworks wall clock. A friend of mine gave this to me several years back. And yeah, it's basic overall, just your standard battery operated clock. This is a Shindawa Quartz wall clock. I got this from one of my family members. Basic overall, it's pretty huge, along with that one. Someone donated this one to me right out of nowhere. It's a lineal centennial battery operated clock. That train up there actually moves around the clock at the hour. However, that one's really finicky and sometimes doesn't want to run. A huge thank you to the anonymous donor for giving that to me. And another anonymous donor gave this to me. And I need to get a new battery in it. But, yeah. I'd like to give a thank you to this donor for getting this for me. See? It's even got my name on it. Yeah. It's a nice one. Here we have a bird clock. New hall quartz with a bird chime. It runs good, however, the chime, I think, might be broken, sadly. I think a battery might have exploded in there, but, yeah, hope to get it fixed sometime. Here we have a, um, a pendulum clock by Quartz. I got this for Christmas, and it runs, the pendulum just doesn't want to move for some reason. I don't know why. Here you got a Texco gasoline station clock. Um, yeah, it runs. I got this for Christmas. This is actually made out of complete glass. This is glass. Very breakable. Here we have an Engelster battery operated cuckoo clock. It does chime on the hour and it runs good. And here we have one of the most rare clocks. It's another Engelster clock. This one is actually key wound and it runs off a spring to run. It doesn't keep complete time. It sometimes runs a bit fast, but I still like it. I got this from one of my family members. Here we have a Sterling and Noble um, wall clock, pretty big. It needs some adjustments. And yeah, I need to get it fixed at some point. One of my family members gave this to me. Here we've got a mustache clock. One of my family members gave that to me. Actually, I think I got that for Christmas. Yeah, I did. Here we have some sort of regulator wall clock. My cousin gave this to me right out of nowhere. Um, as you can see, it has no pendulum and it does not have a key either. And it is pretty glitchy, too, as it just chimes on the three for some reason. I need to figure out how I'm going to get that fixed. Here we have another Japanese regulator. I got this from an antique store for like $150. It runs good overall. And here is the famous Howard Miller regulator. And in which it just stopped for some reason. Maybe I need to wind it, I just don't know. This came off eBay for like $120. And yeah, it, it's in need of some major repairs. And I really am not too sure how I'm going to get it at this point. Here we have a Jensen radio mantle clock, or alarm clock rather. I've had this in my house for several years and it still runs. Here we have a complete glass um Bolova quartz clock focus there we go one of my family members gave that to me here is a friend's hermley bim bam wall slash mantle clock i got this from an antique store for like 70 dollars and it runs really good and up here this one is currently on loan i don't know if i'm gonna have this one for too much longer but 
This is a Westminster Company triple chime mantle clock. Um, currently, this is on loan from one of my friends. And they are probably going to come claim it again at some point. But overall, this is a nice clock. It runs good. However, it does run a bit fast often. But yeah. Here we have an Ingram 8-day gingerbread mantle clock. This came from an antique store in um, Nashville, Tennessee for around like $25. It runs great. It doesn't have a key with it though. And that pendulum, it didn't have a pendulum when I got it. So I got that pendulum off eBay. And it runs perfect. Alright, now I'm going to stop the video here and we will move over to a separate video for the rest of the collection. So here we have a Rocks Hall time only mantle clock. Really unique design overall. And this came from an antique store in Michigan for around like $25. It runs good overall. Here's a Homedix, um, it's, it's a kitchen clock somewhat. And yeah, I got that from a family member. Here we have a sharp alarm clock, it's pretty usual. Here is the Howard Miller Sandringham wall clock. I have it sitting on the mantle just cause it's too heavy for the wall. This came off eBay for about $180 and it runs great. Here we have a Howard Miller 612-437 mantle clock. Great condition, this came from a clock shop for I forgot the amount of how much I got this for. Sounds pretty alike to the Howard Miller Regulator, and it's in great condition. Here we have a Ridgeway Bracket Mantle Clock. One of my friends gave this to me right out of nowhere. Great cosmetic condition, runs perfect, and yeah. Here we have a Jupiter 31 Day mantle slash wall clock this is a korean wall clock this i actually got this for free from the same place as that japanese regulator because when the owner of the store heard about my hobby of collecting clocks the person then decided to give this to me as they thought that it didn't work but apparently it will run, but it has to be on a complete level surface to work properly. It chimes and runs. It's in great cosmetic condition. And yeah. Here is a Cassell 31 day wall clock. This came from an antique store for literally only $12. It was originally $25, but it was 50% off. And I just thought, how about I get it? Great condition, and for the price, it works perfect. Even as the key. And down here, we have a Seth Thomas Mini Ogie mantle clock. This also came from an antique store. It actually came from the same place as that one. Unfortunately, this thing used to run, but it just decided to break right out of nowhere. And I'm not even sure if it's ever going to run again. Yeah, it really sucks this thing broke. And back here we have a WML Gilbert Clock Company mantle clock. This one came from an antique store for like... I actually got this for my birthday. And yeah, this thing used to run, but of course it just decided to break right out of nowhere. Probably won't run again, to be honest. Up here, we have the two amazing clock kits. I have no clue where that one came from. This one came from a jewelry store because I got a tour of the store and they gave me some stuff. So yeah, huge thanks to them. There's um, the Focus. There we go. I don't know what you call those, but I got this from one of my family members. It sadly does not run, I don't think, but it's still a nice clock. 
Here we have all the alarm clocks. That came from a family member. One of my friends gave me that. My cousin gave me that. Another one of my friends gave me that. That came from Goodwill. That came from a jewelry store. I have no clue who gave me that one. Here is the Seth Thomas Ogie clock, and there is a huge story behind this. Someone I know works for a dump. Someone actually dropped this clock off at the dump since it didn't even run. The guy I know who works at the dump remembered my collection, and he found this thing and just decided to give it to me. And, of course, it doesn't run, and it doesn't have a key. But this was basically rescued from a dump. And, yeah, there's a long story behind it. Sucks that it doesn't run. I really wish it did, though. Here are all some of my pocket watches. Um, let's see here. This came from Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. That came from Isle Royale National Park in Michigan. And I have no clue where these came from. And the same person who gave me that one gave me this thing. And it doesn't run, sadly. It's just your basic battery-operated clock. My parents gave me this clock to me. It's a Howard Miller case clock of some sort. It runs good. Another one of my family members gave this to me. Basic. One of my friends decided to donate this to me. It's, a, it's the larger style of the Ogie clock. This one does not run, and it did not have a minute hand when I got it, so this minute hand came from a separate clock shop when we told them about it. This thing needs some help, and it doesn't chime either. But yeah. It's just pretty worn out. This actually is from like the late 1800s, so it's very old. There's a Howard Miller clock. I forgot the name of it, but um, one of my friends gave this to me. It's missing the pendulum, and I think it still runs, but yeah, the pendulum's missing, and I don't know where it went. And up here is... The um, Korean 8-Day Regulator Wall Clock. This came from... Um, this came from some sort of clock trade. I got this for around like $50. And it runs good. This is a Korean clock too. And we will just listen to the clocks chiming 2 p.m. I guess while we're at it, we'll chime it. There's all the clocks going off. So now we're gonna move over to these guys. I got this for my birthday. And I made this myself. I just drew numbers all over it. It's just a piece of wood and I drew on it. I also made the Boeing logo. Here's some sort of snowman clock. It actually chimes and makes melodies from Christmas songs. I just don't have a battery in it. Just some monkey clock. I've had that in my house for several years. Staples quartz clock. One of my family members gave that to me. And as you can see, the second hand fell off. And yeah, it kind of needs some work. Here's a Cal Calvin and Hobbes clock. I think I got this for Christmas. Focus camera, there we go. There's a quartz clock. One of my family members gave it to me. Um, I recently had to replace the movement in it actually. And yeah. The glass is actually off of it. And what else do we have? Well, there's one behind this poster. This one, where you can 
put like five different, there's like five different battery mechanisms in it. And you can just put different times in the world. <laughs> a family member gave this to me. I need to get new batteries in it. So, yeah. Here is the famous Cam's Clock Museum clock. My cousin decided to give this to me. And I decided to write that there. And that's basically a symbol of my museum for when people enter. <laughs> and this big old thing in the middle, one of my friends decided to give that to me. I don't know where the hands went for it, but... And in the middle of it is a basic wooden um, quartz clock. This came from Walmart. And of course, Walmart sucks. But... Am I missing anything else? I think that basically might be my entire collection of clocks. At least in this area, at least. But there's still a few more I need to cover. Like, for instance, here's the Howard Miller Worthington. I got this off eBay for like 250 bucks. Runs perfect. And yeah. I'm glad I managed to get it. And then we have the two grandfather clocks. So to start, here is the emperor grandfather clock. My aunt decided to give this to me. Well, technically bought it for me. She bought it at a yard sale and it only costs like 50 bucks. It does not run sadly, but it had all the parts to it. And then, of course, the famous colonial grandfather clock. There is, a, there is a giant story behind this. I had gotten this clock back in July of 2018 from a friend of mine who works for a dump. Actually, the same person who gave me the Seth Thomas mantle clock gave me this one. And same, it's basically a similar story. Um, he had found this clock at the dump because someone dropped it off he then decided to take it when he noticed it and i believe he actually had to store it in his shed for the time being and then when he saw my collection um he remembered he had this in his shed and then he decided to drop this off and yeah we managed to get haul it down here get it all set up and it works absolutely perfect. The door was damaged on it when we got it, so it had no door for several years. But in September of 2020, we managed to get the door repaired, and now it's back up on the clock. I'd like to give a huge thank you to this anonymous person for giving it to me. This is actually the first grandfather clock I ever got. Huge thank you to them for that. And what I think might be the second to last clock I'll show is this Howard Miller clock. I forgot the model number of it, but a family member decided to give this to me. I recently had to replace the movement in it, too. And to conclude, we have this Beatles clock. And this I got this for Christmas, and it runs good. So, with that being said, I think that is in my entire collection, basically. I managed to run through nearly every clock in the shop. So, I hope you all enjoyed this tour. Feel free to comment below if you like these tours. And also be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And once again, thank you all so much for 10,000 subscribers. So without further ado, that is going to conclude this video. And thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And see you guys later. Bye, everybody.